Hello. I'd like to build out on some of your thoughts about Chapter 1. Several individuals said, why don't we teach communication? And I want to share with you an example. I was one of the, quote, certified, end of quote, trainers for Shell Oil's course called Beyond Boundaries, Developing Intercultural Competence for Business Effectiveness. And I'd like to share with you a few of the items that we covered because I think they're relevant to our course. We had an activity looking at productive behaviors of global business teams, cross-cultural teams. But as I was reflecting on these to prepare a video of feedback, I realized these apply to every team. So there are seven major findings of a nine-month study of 12 global business teams representing 56 people came to seven big overall conclusions around productivity, meetings, communication, I have to fix my notes, writing, and differences and disagreements. First, the most productive teams communicated more in informal social ways. Everything was not reduced to an email. Secondly, they utilized two and a half times more task and relationship building activities than unsuccessful teams. Three, they more frequently disagreed with one another. Out of disagreement comes analysis, synthesis, and usually a better idea. Four, the teams critically analyzed issues in the team meetings. Five, they focused on the task in a positive manner in writing. They didn't complain about it, they were positive about it. Six, they acted as cultural interpreters to one another. And finally, they all desired to work together. On productivity, the successful teams agreed they were doing well, couldn't agree on how their managers perceived their performance, and desired consistency by top management. This reflects several comments in the DB activities around one manager saying one thing, another manager saying another. That clearly indicates a dysfunctional communication uh, with top management. It indicates non-alignment. And that's an issue that management has to take care of. Meetings. They were flexible in their discussion styles. And I want to stress the word discussion. My face-to-face -face students here on campus have told me that they thought a business meeting was like a classroom with a lecturer who comes in, gives information, people write it down, and then leave. That startled me. The concept of discussing an issue is what business is all about. Have you had team meetings where nobody discussed anything? Another interesting aspect of these successful teams is they actually rotated the leadership of the team meetings. Now, I've never experienced that. But as I reflected, I thought, man, that's not such a bad idea. Different people, different ways of doing things, different ideas, different exposures.
leaders of the meetings gave options early in the discussions. They took the role of contributing to the discussion, facilitating the discussion, structuring the process, and creating an atmosphere of mutual support. In other words, they just didn't yak away during the entire meeting. They acted more in the facilitator role. Have you had that experience? How'd you feel when the leader was facilitating and not dictating? Successful meetings also shared their perception of teamwork, whether it was going well or going poorly, and better than that, what to do to fix the problems. They were in their circle of influence to fix the problem. Have you in your relationships at work been able to fix the problems or did the problems just continue on? Successful meetings also mean that the members feel free to disagree with one another. Now that's certainly quite different than the comments that you've been making on the discussion board. Well, I've asked some questions. I hope they were a bit challenging. If you feel motivated, put a reply to the bottom of this uh, video and we can continue the discussion. Thank you.